Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm Thomas. This is the Buffalo Fanatics. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the 53-man roster, the final roster, who I think is going to make that roster, and I'm also going to show you guys my predicted uh, and projected depth chart for both the offense and the defense, so stick around. So first off, I just want to apologize to you guys. Um, I've been on vacation. I've been working. Um, I've been doing other things that's not with the Buffalo Fanatics, and I apologize. Um, you know, I've just been busy with my girlfriend. I've been busy with a lot of stuff going on, um, and I've just, I've, you know, to be honest, there's not a lot of Bills stuff going on until now. I mean, now it's the preseason, so there is going to be more videos coming out uh, shortly. And, you know, just stick around and stay tuned for that. But anyways, this video is not about that. This video is about the Buffalo Bills, my favorite topic to talk about. And, you know, let's start with the defense. Let's just jump right into it. So the defense. A defensive tackle, there's pretty much no, no room for, you know, any kind of other player than who's going to be on here. Uh, I got Kyle Williams. I got Starla Tule, Harrison Phillips and Adolphus Washington. Um, and I think that that's going to be the solid four, you know, two pretty young players and Harrison Phillips and Adolphus Washington. Um, and I think are going to be backups for this year. Starla Tule and, and Kyle Williams are going to be big. Um, they're going to be crucial parts of that D line holding it together. Next up, we got uh, the right end and the left end. Um, obviously for right end, we have Jerry Hughes and Eddie Yarborough. And for left end, we have Trent Murphy and we have Shaq Lawson. So they'll probably, uh, you know, both of, both of those positions um, will probably rotate. So it's going to be Jerry Hughes probably as first string. And then it's going to be Eddie Yarborough has second string. And then also the, kind of the same with, um, with left end as far as Trent Murphy being number one and Shaq Lawson being number two and rotating uh, reps. At linebacker, I have Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, uh, Lorenzo Alexander, Deion Lacey, Tanner Vallejo, uh, Kanan Robinson, and Julian Stanford uh, to make the final man roster. So not much, you know, here, kind of just the projected whatever, um, you know, a couple of backup players. And, you know, you could probably substitute one or two of them, but I think that these guys are going to be good because Deion Lacey, Tanner Vallejo, and Julian Stanford all help out on special teams. It's going to help them make the roster um, with that, you know, added skill as well. So moving on to cornerback, we have one of my favorite Buffalo Bills players, Tredavious White, Trey White. Got Vontae Davis, Teron Johnson, Philip Gaines. I got my boy Levi Wallace, the undrafted free agent out of Alabama on here. And I also have Lafayette Pitts uh, for special teams and just, uh, you know, another roster spot. At free safety, I have Jordan Poyer and Raphael Bush. Strong safety, I got Micah Hyde and Saran Neal. Not really surprises there. Uh, and that completes 25 players on defense. Now let's move right on in to the offensive side of the ball. So at center, I got Ryan Groy and Russell Bodine, or Bodine, however you want to say his name. Um, you know, we, are, we already know that these two are pretty much going to make the roster. Um, not much really more to add there. You could also add Reed Ferguson. Um, I put him as a long snapper, but, you know, you could put him as center. Uh, he is here as well. At guard, I have John Miller, Vlad Dukas, and Wyatt Teller. I think that, um, you know, John Miller is going to take a big step this year. He's really been working out uh, really hard. And, you know, and I think he's just he's just bound to take a big step. And I think with him starting at right guard, um, that's going to be, it's going to be a really big help. Um, and I think Vlad Dukas is going to take on that left side, that left guard position. And then Wyatt Teller is just going to be the backup for both those positions, learning right guard and left guard. Uh, at tackle, I also have Jordan Mills at the right side, Dion Dawkins on the left side, and Marshall Newhouse um, on both sides uh, filling in if one of those players gets injured. Uh, at tight end, I got Charles Clay and Nick O'Leary. Not much a surprise, but I do have Jason Kroom, the young tight end. The third tight end spot is really kind of an interesting one because you got Logan Thomas, you got guys like Kari Lee, Jason Kroom. You know, you got guys who definitely can take that spot, but I think that Jason Kroom, because he's young, and I think that he's just going to take a big step, or, or at least he's going to take a step in the right direction, 
to make that roster spot. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having him or Logan Thomas. I mean, this, this spot's really not much to, you know, to get all hyped about anyways, but I think Jason Kroom does make it by just a little bit. Now moving on to wide receivers, one of my favorite positions on offense. How about Kelvin Benjamin in that preseason game against the Panthers? 40 something yards for like, for like one touchdown. How many receptions? I don't even remember, but that that's what a number one, a true number one wide receiver looks like. Maybe he was just playing because of the hype, because of Cam Newton, who knows what he was doing. But man, did he look like a true number one wide receiver. But yeah, we also got the newly acquired. We gave up a 2020 seventh round pick. I mean, that is that is not even peanuts, folks. I mean, that is a peanut. He, Brandon Bean literally gave up a peanut to get Corey Coleman. Basically nothing. I mean, that guy, if you think about Austin Prohl, he's not really going to make the squad. I think probably practice squad. And if you trade a guy like Corey Coleman, who's pro who can be promising, who just had injuries to just stop him from being the, the uh, what he was at Baylor his final year, I mean, like 1,300 receiving yards, 20 touchdowns, 70-something receptions. I mean, he is just crazy at Baylor. And if he can recapture that with Buffalo, with either Nathan Peterman, Josh Allen, or A.J. McCarron behind the wheel, you know, hey... Might, might be able to revitalize that career and show Cleveland why they were dumb for letting him go in the first place. At the third string, at the slot position, I have um, Jeremy Curley. Um, I think that he just kind of, with his possession kind of style of play I, and, and being a little quick, I think that he'll be good in the slot. Um, at the fourth string position, I got Zay Jones. I think Zay's got to make a massive step to take that job from Corey Coleman or Jeremy Curley in the slot. He's got to do something to really, really show up. I think that these these four players are locks. I think that it's Kelvin Benjamin. I think it's Zay Jones. I think it's Corey Coleman. And I think it's Jeremy Curley, not in that exact order. But, you know, those guys are locks, I think. Next up at the fifth string spot, you know, this is a toss up because I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, Brandon Riley. He had that 58, 59 yard catch with uh, AJ McCarron thrown to him. You know, he looked pretty good. Uh, talking about Rod Streeter, talking about, um, they were talking about Robert Foster, but let's be honest, Robert Foster looked horrible. He looked lost. I don't think he makes it. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, you got those guys. I say Andre Holmes makes it. I don't like this. I, ness I really don't, but I really can't see Rod Streeter making a push. Um, I think that he'll be kind of, if he doesn't start making noise, he's done. Um, same with same with Robert Foster. If he doesn't start making noise, he's done. Cam Phillips, if he doesn't start making noise, he's done. Malachi Dupree, if he doesn't start making noise, he's done. You know what I mean? So I think that um, Andre Holmes makes a roster because of the fact that he was here last year. He actually had the most touchdowns receiving for the Bills last year with four. I mean, surprisingly, you won't you won't think that he did. You'll think, Andre Holmes, that dude didn't do anything last year. Why is he on, what? He's gonna, he had the most? He did, he had four. And you know, we all know that with Tyrod at the wheel, you know, you don't really get the ball out to the wide receivers, at least on the Bills. Who knows with having Jarvis Landry in Cleveland, who knows what's gonna happen there. But anyways, not about Tyrod. Uh, moving on, like I said, so here's the six. We got KB, Coleman, Curley, Jones, Holmes, and Ray Ray McLeod. At fullback, easy one here. Patrick DeMarco, the veteran. Uh, now at running back, four running backs here on the roster that I got. I got LaShawn McCoy, obviously a lock. Chris Ivory, obviously a lock. Travaris, Cadet. He could be third string, he could be fourth string, who I think is making absolute noise right now and who's going to make the roster, no no problem whatsoever. Marcus Murphy, and Rico has been, he's been talking about Marcus Murphy being, you know, good um, and, and on the rise, and, and you know, he's completely right. I mean, if you look at Marcus Murphy, I think every Bills fan can look at Marcus Murphy and say, okay, that's a guy who's definitely, who should be on this roster. Um, now, Keith Ford, he went to my old high school um, back in when I lived in Texas, and you know, you know, my sister know my sister knew him. She, he was in his, her math class. I'm I want him to make the roster. I, I really do. But with how bad his pass protection is, you know, his lack of being able to get yards, especially against the Panthers, he was looking good. I'm I'm not gonna lie. When I went to the practice at the Buffalo Bills Stadium not that long ago, he was looking good. He made a very long 
probably like 60 plus yard TD run. The practice before that, he had like a 63 yard touchdown run, you know, and he was making a little bit of noise, but I think against a game, against an oppo opponent, you have to show that you are going to be solid, and I just don't think that he did, and if he can't do it, like, if he can't make start, start making noise, like Cam Phillips, and, you know, Rod Streeter, and Robert Foster, he's gone, or at least on the practice squad. He'll probably make the practice squad if he doesn't, um, you know, get cut. Now at quarterback, this is obviously, the, I wanted to save this for last because it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we all know that there's going to be three, uh, three QBs going into week one. It's going to be Allen, it's going to be Peterman, and it's going to be McCarron, not in any order. But, you know, those are the guys that we have. And then also, we got Steven Hausch at the kicker, and we got Colton Schmidt at punter, and we also have Reed Ferguson at long snapper. Um, so that's going to complete my 53-man roster. What do you guys think about it? Is there anybody, is there any player that you guys would switch out? If so, please tell me in the comments down below. Now let's move right into the depth chart and, and break down every single position. So starting with the offense, on the offensive line, at left tackle, I have Deion Dawkins starting, and I have Marshall Newhouse at the second string position. At left guard, I have Vlad Dukas and Wyatt Teller. At center, I have Ryan Groy starting, and I have Russell, I have Russell Bodine at the backup position. At right guard, I have John Miller and Wyatt Teller backing him up. And at right tackle, I have Jordan Mills and Marshall Newhouse. At wide receiver one, I have KB. At wide receiver two, I have Corey Coleman in the slot. I got Jeremy Curley, fourth string, Zay Jones, and then Andre Holmes and Ray Ray McLeod. At running back, I have LaShawn McCoy. I have Chris Ivory. I got Travaris Cadet and Marcus Murphy. I could actually see Marcus Murphy taking that third string position away from Travaris Cadet just on the basic fact that he's played so well for us um, recently. I mean, look at like like what last uh, the last game of the regular season last year against the Dolphins. He looked pretty good there, um, and he also looked pretty good in the preseason. And you know, I think that he can definitely take that leap and make it to the third string spot, putting Cadet at four. At QB starting for week one, I think Peterman's going to just take it. Um, I think that there was a reason going into preseason week number one why they wanted they wanted um, to start Peterman. And I think there was a reason why they wanted Allen to just sit. I think that that was it. I think that McCarron and Peterman are going to battle it out. But I think that, Mc that McCarron's going to lose that battle only on the simple fact that he just doesn't have any mobility and he takes a lot of sacks and I think that with his O-line being so banged up as it is, he just won't be able to shine. Man, when he has time though in the pocket, McCarron is a freaking gunslinger. I mean, maybe not to the extent of like Brett Favre, but you know, I mean, like he's he's able to sit back there and find and find you. I mean, you know, it looks like Brady kind of how he can just sit in the pocket, sit in the pocket. Oh, okay, there's a wide receiver open. You know, and that's kind of what AJ McCarron does best. He needs time and then he's good. That's basically what I'm saying. So, but I think Nate Peterman will take the starting job only on the simple fact that I think that he will have enough time and experience to be able to, to upgrade that decision making um, and be much better. Um, and then Allen, I think that the reason why they started him third string is to get him experience with just crappy talent, just just kind of get um, get acclimated to the NFL. And I think that this tells me that this move is either either you know if, if we suck this year and we're going you know like let's say we're like six and eight. And you know you're not going to make the playoffs. Like we just lost in week 14 or whatever, or week 15, whatever. And there's only two more games this season. Yeah, week 15. And there's only two more games this season. You know, and we're sitting there um, at six and eight. I think we start we start Allen. The last two games of the season, see what he can do. See if you can go eight and eight. See if you can go seven and eight. Win one, loss one. You know, win one, lose one, and, and see you know how he does against the other team's um, uh, best players. Obviously, at fullback, I got Patrick DeMarco. And at tight end, we got Charles Clay, Nick O'Leary, and Jason Kroom. Now moving on to defense. So at the free safety spot, I have Jordan Poyer and Raphael Bush. At the strong safety position, I have Micah Hyde and Saran Neal. At left outside linebacker, I have Lorenzo Alexander and Dion Lacey. At middle linebacker, I have Tremaine Edmonds, Tanner Vallejo, and Julian Stanford. At right outside linebacker, I have Matt Milano and Keenan Robinson. At left end, I have Trent Murphy and Shaq Lawson. And at defensive tackle, I have Kyle Williams, Starla Toulet, Harrison Phillips, and Adolphus Washington. 
And finally, at right guard, I have Jerry Hughes and Eddie Yarbrough. Please, guys, tell me what you guys think about this uh, depth chart. Would you be happy with it? Is there anything that you would change? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear you guys' response to this. And I I'm sure, you know, everybody else in the community would also like to hear your opinion as well. So don't forget to leave a comment. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and leave a like. Obviously, like I said, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Buffalo Fanatics is on the rise. So share if you can. Tell a friend. Tell another Buffalo Bills fan. You know, tell anybody about it because, you know, let's just grow as much as we can. We want to hit 5K. We want to hit 10K. We're on that 10K chase. So help us get there. And thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Go Bills. Peace.